Everybody, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to um, the first session. I um, hope you've all recovered from whatever you did last night. And um, we're, it's about zero knowledge. And um, we're going to have families of snark friendly, two chains of elliptic curves. Um, and the speaker's going to be Joseph. Over to you. non-interactive arguments of knowledge so those are um, so proofs so so that so they are uh, complete sound but only computational uh, computationally sound so uh, with respect to a computationally bounded prover and they are non-interactive so there is no interaction between the prover and the verifier throughout the protocol and um, succinct which informally put means that uh, a proof is very short and easy to verify yeah here we go um, so among those ZK snarks, so there are pre-processing ZK snarks for NP language. So we will be proving statements about so a word belongs to a non-deterministic polynomial language. So, so just to put some notations, so uh, we have our NP program F with public input X and Z, a private input W, such as the relation is satisfied. So Z equal to F of X and W. So a snark is typically, cons consists typically in a, three algorithms, so set up. So it takes the program F, some security parameter lambda, and outputs some key material. So PK as in proving key and VK as in verification key. So the proof algorithm takes basically all the inputs, so the public input and the private input, and PK which encodes the program to the prover, and outputs some proof here denoted pi. And uh, so the verification algorithm takes basically all the public inputs and the proof pi and outputs a Boolean the, whether the proof is verified or not. So the setup can be done by anyone or in some protocols which are trapdoored by a trusted party or in a multi-party computation way. Uh, the, the proof in algorithm is done by well, basically the one who knows the secret W and the verifier, anyone who has access to this proof and the public inputs. Um, so we've been talking about zero knowledge rules, ZK snarks as a subset and pre-processing ZK snarks. And those pre-processing ZK snarks are best instantiated with uh, pairings over elliptic curves. Um, so we need an elliptic curve. So here it's given, it's given in short Weierstrass transform, so defined over a, a finite field of uh, prime characteristic or prime power. So it has a, a subgroup uh, of prime order R. Uh, so R divides Q plus one minus T, so T is the Frobenius trace. And so for pairings, we need this embedding degree to be small enough. So the embedding degree K is like the smallest integer such as R, the suburb order divides Q to the K minus one. And so a bilinear pairing is this uh, bilinear map that goes from G1 cross G2 to GT. So G1 and G2 and TT are groups uh, of order R. Uh, so G1 is the group of uh, so define the group of points on the elliptic curve divided over the base field. G2 over an extension field, and GT is a uh, is, is on an extension uh, FQ to the K. So it's the after group of uh, the after group for, of unity, and those three groups are uh, of the same order. 
so I will just give an example of one of the pairing based uh, snacks that is widely used and implemented nowadays. So our relation is z equal to f of x and w. So x, z and w here I'm giving them in, in vectors. So the setup, uh, so output these key materials, which are a bunch of elements in these groups, uh, in these pairing groups, G1, G2, and GT. Uh, the proving algorithm outputs are uh, three points on, on, on the curve, so on G1 and G2. So we see that they are constant size with respect to some security parameter lambda. And what we are interested in, in the, is the verification algorithm. So the verification algorithm is where the pairing computation is needed. So to verify the proof, it boils down to verifying this pairing product check, uh, which is a pair, uh, so a check off. So we just need to compute some pairings between the proof element and the verification element. And this is basically how we verify the proof. So why we are talking about this is because we need to do, so in this talk, recursive proofs. So that is proofs verifying other proofs. So there are a bunch of applications for this. One of them is the proof aggregation, because we've seen here that uh, the proof is constant size. So imagine you have like a thousand of proofs, and if you do a proof of a thousand of proofs, then the resulting proof will be constant size. So you have like a single constant size proof that verifies a thousand of proofs. There are other applications for uh, uh, recursive proofs, such as uh, space and time complexity, and we, as we will see in the next talk by Miguel. Um, so what we want to do is a proof of a proof. So uh, in pairing based snarks, so our uh, MP program F, uh, so lives, uh, so the computations are performed in FR, with R the subgroup order of the elliptic curve. And the proving algorithm is done in G1 and in G2 in instance for GOS 16, which are of order R, but the verification algorithm is a pairing computation, which takes place in a different field, which is, uh, so the GT target group, or at least the, uh, the, the extension field FP to the K. So if you want to create a proof that verifies another proof, then there is an arithmetic mismatch. The problem is uh, you need to express the pairing computation as an arithmetic circuit in FR, and the parent computation lives in FQ, at least FQ to the K. So one first attempt would be to uh, have a curve, an elliptic curve that has Q equal to R, but this is like the kind of curves that we do not use in cryptography because the discrete logarithm is broken in this case. The second attempt would be uh, to simulate or to emulate the operations FQ in FR. So Q is now equal to R. So R is the sum of order, Q is the field, uh, so the size of the base field. So this is theoretically possible, but it results in a huge overhead. And the third attempt would be not to use the same elliptic curves for the proof and for the recursive proof, but to change the elliptic curves in order to, to not have this arithmetic mismatch. And this is what we call chains or cycles of elliptic curves. So just to, 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 to explain this, so we will have here uh, what I'm calling a snark zero. So it has a pairing E, so three groups G1, G2, and GT of order R. And then, so we instantiate this with an elliptic curve that we call an inner curve. Uh, so E zero defined over FQ of prime order R. And uh, we need to uh, have an, a second snark, so snark one, that verifies a pairing computation that takes place in FQ. So we will instantiate it with a different elliptic curves, so with a pairing E, where the, the pairing groups are of order Q. So this is the outer curve, so E1 defined over a different field FS, but it has an order equal to the base field of the previous one, or at least that divides, uh, so so the, we can unknown some, some cofactor. So, uh, if we make abstraction of these, so given some, some integer Q, we search for a parent friendly curve E1 of order H times Q over any finite uh, field Fs. So this is uh, already known in the literature, but um, if we take a look back, what we need exactly for a snark is a curve that is pairing friendly, but there is a condition for uh, efficient implementation, which is, R minus one, so the subgroup order minus one should be a highly two addict, which means should be divisible by a high power of two. Uh, this is for implementing efficient fast Fourier transforms. So, because as I told you, the computations of the prover take place in FR, and it is basically some polynomial arithmetic, which are best implemented using fast Fourier transforms. And fast Fourier transforms are best implemented using a radix two FFTs. 
So we need the subgroup order minus one to be highly to adequate. So this is just for snacks. We can pick any elliptic curves on the literature that is pairing friendly, and we can uh, see if we can make the R minus one highly to adequate. But if we want to do two chains, so uh, recursive two chains, we can have we can look at cycles, which means basically two elliptic curves for which the subgroup order of one is equal to the finite field of the other one, and vice versa. But unfortunately, we know only MNT4 and MNT6 for these uh, cycles, which are not quite efficient at uh, 128 bit security because basically this, the unbidden degree is 4 and 6, which is small. Uh, but in our recursive snarks with two chains, uh, we can create uh, or we can construct these elliptic curves in a uh, sequential fashion. So we start by uh, finding our first, so the inner elliptic curve, which, is, which has to be pairing friendly, R minus 1 to be highly to addict. Also, Q minus one, the final, the, the, the base field characteristic minus one, because this base field characteristic will be the subgroup order of the next curve. So the next curve should be pairing friendly and should have a subgroup order precisely equal to the base field of the previous one. Um, so, um, so we know methods from the literature in order to find an elliptic, a pairing friendly elliptic curves with precisely uh, with a precise subgroup order. So for example, the cook finch method. So in order to find a pair friendly elliptic curve, we need the base field to be a prime or a prime power, the Frobenius trace to be relatively prime to Q. So in order to roll out super singular elliptic curves, in this case, uh, the subgroup order to be prime to divide Q plus one minus T. Uh, so this is the, the order of the curve and R divides Q to the K minus one. So this is the embedding degree and the complex multiplication equation should be satisfied for not some not too big discriminant in order to find the coefficients of the curve. So here we just need to fix R. Uh, so here first, so the cox finch method is basically just uh, relies on the observation that T minus one is equal to Q modulo R. So we just need to find a generator of Z out of RZ and to raise it to r minus one out of q so that it is a kth root of unity. Um, so there is like the translation mutatis mutandis to this algorithm to the to the polynomial domain. Uh, so which is called so it is due to Brezing Wang and independently also to Barrett, Olin and Scott. Uh, and the ratio of um, the sizes of the base field and the subgroup order is 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 at least two in cox pinch, but in Brazing Wang is smaller strictly than two because uh, we, we reason about uh, degrees of polynomials. Uh, and also the polynomials here are expressed, so the, the parameters of the curves are expressed as polynomials, which help us have faster implementations. Uh, so there are a long line of research in order to optimize pairing impl implementations when, when parameters are given in, in in polynomials. But the problem we have here, um, so in Brezing Wang method, we just look for a polynomial R of X. But in our case, the polynomial R of X is already fixed because it is the polynomial P of X of the previous curve, of the inner curve. So we do not have any flexibility here. And in all the families we've looked at, so Barreto Lin Scott or Barreto Naig or even KSS uh, families, uh, the resulting polynomial Q of X, so the base field of the outer curve, is never irreducible, which means that we can never, it can never output uh, polynomials. So uh, we are obliged to lift uh, the, the polynomial parameters of the curves, and here uh, basically the Frobenius trace and the, the, the complex multiplication equations with respect to this R in order to make Q. Um, uh, an irreducible polynomial that satisfies the Bunyakovsky conjecture, which means that we can, uh, so this polynomial can output uh, primes. Um, so with in mind two applications, which are two kind of snacks, one is Gauss 16 and one, what I'm calling here is universal KZG snacks. So universal snacks, uh, are instantiated in the PIOP model with a polynomial commitment scheme. And the polynomial commitment scheme here, I'm taking the KZG polynomial scheme, which relies on pairing. So we have the same mismatch arithmetic than in Gauss 16. But 
look at what we want. So we want 128-bit security for both. We want the curve to be the curves, so the first one and the second one to be pairing friendly. But here we're looking at the snark zero, so the first one. Uh, and we want efficient, so for Go 16, we want efficient arithmetic over G1, G2, GT, so all the three groups, and the pairing. But for universal KZG uh, snarks, such as if you want, if you know Planck or Marlin or Sonic, uh, we do not need G2 arithmetic and we do not need GT arithmetic. We just need efficient G1 arithmetic and efficient uh, pairings. So we look for uh, two families of elliptic curves for which we have these and we need P minus one and R minus one both to be divisible by a high power of two. So we looked at families from uh, Barretolin Scott's uh, family of curves of embedding degrees 12 and 24. And uh, the kangaroo uh, that it needs to, to, to satisfy is just the seed of the curve. So the, the value on which the polynomials are evaluated is congruent to one mod three times two to the L. And L here is, is your input, is the, the, the power of two you need uh, to divide uh, both p minus one and r minus one. But most interesting, uh, um, so most interestingly is um, the second curve, so the snark one. Uh, so we need it to be 128 bit secure, pairing friendly, efficient arithmetic for all the groups and the pairings, and r to be equal to p. So we looked at uh, blazing wing families and cox pinch families, and uh, we have some result that shows that you can have at most k equal to six, so the embedded degree uh, equal to six. And um, so we derived the formulas for arithmetic over the three groups and the novel uh, pairing computations for, for this case, uh, just in terms of the seed x and the lifting of factors H, ht and hy. So wherever the curve you start with, uh, the, the outer curve will always have the same formulas in terms of these uh, parameters, which uh, gives us um, a family of, uh, of two chains uh, in this sense. Uh, so we looked, we looked also at cox pinch uh, curve of embedding degree high, of higher embedding degrees, so 8 and 12, for more conservative security. Um, so uh, we shortlist a bunch of curves of two chains. Uh, that we spent to some from these families. And um, so for Go16, we took, uh, so uh, our method uh, rediscovers uh, some old curves proposed in the literature, so namely BLS12, 377, and BW6761. And for universal KZG, uh, so we sampled new curves based on the BLS24 families and um, so the BW6. So we showed that BW6 is always faster than Cox Pinch 8 or Cox Pinch 12. So here I give the example of Gross 16 and Universal KZG is uh, uh, one of the versions of, uh, of Planck. So we see that the prover only, so, so the computation of the prover only uh, takes place in G1 uh, and the for Gross 16 takes place also in G2. Um, so the FV program, which is the program that verifies the, the old SNAP, which basically verifies uh, the pairing computation. So, uh, so SNARKs reason about arithmetic circuits. So the number of gates, if we want to, to translate or to port a state-of-the-art implementation of BLS12 curves into an arithmetic circuit, it results in 80,000 constraints or 80,000 gates, multiplication gates, and we were able to reduce it to 19,000. Uh, and here are some benchmarks to, for um, so, so for the um, shortlisted uh, shortlisted curves with respect to the algorithm set up, prove, and uh, and verify. Um, so I don't think so I don't know if I have connection here. Yeah, so um, uh, no, it's not shut. <laughs> So this is a, a playground. So uh, that's uh, so. So we use the GNARK ecosystem. So uh, an ecosystem written in Go uh, for SNARK proofs. So it's in, it's already implemented Go 16 and Planck, and we implemented all the curves we we, we shortlisted into this ecosystem. And here there is a playground uh, that uh, creates a SNARK proof uh, in the in the browser. So in WebAssembly. Um, so I have examples for, so you, you, you can look at it uh, uh, 
on your browser. So it is play.knack.io. So I have one of the examples to create proof of proofs. And uh, basically, you can create a proof on the browser, and you can check the number of constraints, and it uh, prints all the, the so, so the arithmetic circuit in order to verify a pair. Um, so yeah, so that's it. So the pairing is uh, so the paper is on ePrint. Uh, the implementations are open sourced uh, under MIT license, so it is written in Go. We have also implementation in StageMath and Magma in order to verify uh, the formulas we propose in the paper. So we, which are basically this novel pairing computation, uh, some tricks for um, subgroup membership uh, uh, on all the groups, and there is a follow-up work with. Uh, and Diego Arania, which is a survey of elliptic curves for proof systems. And that's it for me. Thank you. Do we have, do we have any questions? So I've got, a, I've got a question. Sure. So you've got uh, two elliptic curves that are kind of related to each other. Um, have you thought, I mean, and you've got like a lot of constraints in the system, you know, to, to make them match up. So have you thought of actually making one like a, a curve of genus two and then like using a pairing on a curve of genus two because that's going to have a smaller field it might give you a bit more freedom so i haven't looked at uh, curves of genus two and uh, so so the pairings on curves on genus two are efficient enough who knows <laughs> because that's i think i thought the idea down there i mean no, i have no idea because i mean at the end of the day the pairing is uh, needed for the verification yeah, yeah, yeah. part which should be succinct otherwise yeah. Yeah, it might be giving you more freedom. Any other questions? That's oh, yeah, can you? Yeah, okay, I'll run down. Hold on. Hi, thanks hey. for the talk. Uh, you mentioned proof systems like Plonk, which have uh, high toidicity and lots of roots of unity. Um, yeah. How much easier does it get to um, come up with cycles and stuff? Would you had had to do so much work if you didn't need all these roots of unity? Uh, so cycles, if you do not need the roots of unity, they are trivial to find from complex multiplication theory. Uh, so uh, if you do not, if you do not, no, I'm sorry. If you need pairings, then uh, the only cycles we know about are MNT4 and MNT cycles. So it's the same problem. So maybe it will be just the the size. Uh, so for example, in Lina protocol, it's just seven seven hundred uh, something bits. Uh, and for 128 20, uh, uh, bits of security, you need uh, more than this, you need a thousand of bits. So it will be always the same problem if you need pairing friendliness. If you do not need pairing friendliness, so if you, for example, if you use a halo where, where it uses a uh, polynomial commitment that doesn't need pairings, then cycles are easy to find. Uh. Okay, no more questions. Well, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you. Thank you.